Product discovery is all about learning. What is our market? What do our customers want? How can we help them? In this video on product discovery, let's identify the techniques that can answer those questions. Hi folks, my name is Tatiana and I'm a business analysis competence lead at Altexsoft. And in this episode, I'll talk about some of the most useful techniques and practices to run product discovery. Before I dive into specific activities, let's talk about high-level mindset. How should we think about exploring the market and finding product market fit? Fortunately, we can learn from the experience of the tech giants, for example, design thinking approach. What is that? The core idea of the design thinking is to look at the product from the user's standpoint. It is elegantly explained by Dr. Frederick Gipfert from Google. Begin each ideation exercise by discussing the people who will use your product or service. If possible, talk to those people directly. The practical takeaway here is to empathize with people, learn how they interact with the product, the problem they have, and focus your effort on solving them. This approach is what actually helped Apple come up with innovative products in late 90s and after. IBM and Netflix also apply design thinking in product development. Design thinking suggests focusing on people and their problems rather than the solution. And this idea inhabits the core of product discovery. But how do we define the pain points of our customers? Here we can apply our first technique called jobs to be done. With any product, a user must have a motivation to interact with it. Say, Jacob uses Photoshop a couple of times per year because he retouches photos from corporate events. There are a number of things he needs to do, like color correction, cropping or pixel cloning. All of these actions are his jobs to be done. When we look at the market through the lens of jobs rather than user personas, it gives us more clarity on the product this audience needs. What design patterns we should use, which monetization tactics to apply, all depend on user motivations. If we develop an Adobe Photoshop alternative, users like Jacob would tell us that color correction, pixel cloning and other jobs are crucial for the product. But a monthly subscription that Adobe suggests is not what Jacob needs to complete his jobs. He opens Photoshop once every few months, so that might be a pain point we are searching for. Jobs to be done is a framework for exploring the market and finding existing pain points. Combined with the design thinking, it gives us more clarity on what our customers truly want and helps us understand where their market fit is. And this helps us move in the right direction, because at this point we understand the desire of our customers. So our next step should be understanding how we can address and solve them, right? Here we can use the design sprint technique. A design sprint is a framework suggested by Google Ventures to answer critical business questions and validate product ideas. The essence of this practice is that we fit our solution design into a five-day sprint. This schedule suggests five steps a team must complete to solve a single design problem. On the first day, we explore the problem and frame it. Taking our photo editing application example, say we focus on the problem of a clumsy user interface but we try to frame it as a question about how to group various tools a user chooses on the panel. On a second day, the team ideates, simply put, brainstorms any possible solutions. For instance, we assume that we can either group tools by their purpose or split tools into multiple views to switch between. On the third day, we evaluate ideas. At this stage, we discuss if having several views for the tool panel makes sense in terms of the customer jobs. And probably we may decide it is nice to have feature rather than a core one, so we skip it for now and move forward with the grouping idea. Then, on the first day, we create actual prototypes of our interface. Finally, test and gather feedback during the fifth day. Design Sprint is equally effective to solving problems for the existing product or exploring new opportunities for the future one. The coolest thing about this technique is that we set a specific time frame to focus on a single aspect of users' jobs to be done and generate solutions. And yet, a set of solutions for the real market problems is not enough to move on. Besides customer jobs, you have your own jobs you want to accomplish. So as a business, you always have two problems to explore in parallel. The first is market conditions. Exploration helps define numerous things like who are our customers, what are their pains and needs, how does they resolve them now? All of these questions help describe the latter part of the product market fit. The second is business itself. We need to clearly understand what our value proposition is, 
who benefits from this value and how we are going to monetize the product. And it's critical for us to understand and document both elements. Here we can use a Lean Canvas and Value Proposition Canvas. First, let's talk about the Lean Canvas. Lean Canvas is basically a short version of Business Model Canvas, which you can explore on our website. Check the link in the description below. Lean Canvas describes the main aspect of your company, such as problem or set of problems you are trying to solve, solution, a short description of how your product is solving these problems, key metrics as a list of things we need to keep track of to see if you're making any success, customers and their segments, sales channels, revenue streams, cost structure and unique value proposition. The initial purpose of this document is to create a short, single-page presentation of your business, and it gives you two benefits during product discovery. First, Lean Canvas is quite easy to create compared to bulky business plans that describe basically the same thing. And second, this canvas gives visibility to the team, improving the vision of your business goals and how you want to achieve them. Lean Canvas is often used together with the Value Proposition Canvas, while Lean Canvas is a general document that covers all product aspects. The Value Proposition Canvas focuses on our unique value for the customer. It's a framework that structures all the key information we know about our customers so far. This way, we can document customer problems and make sure that the product fits the market. There are two building blocks here. The first one is a customer profile, with the three categories of things. Gains – the benefits a customer expects from the product. Pains – the existing problems they experience. And customer jobs – a set of action a person should be able to complete using the product. Then we define the second block as our value map and outline gain creators or exactly which benefits your product suggests to the customer, pain relievers or how your proposition resolves the negative experiences a customer has, and products and services that create those gains and relieve pains. A value proposition canvas perfectly aligns with the jobs to be done practice, since it uses the outcomes of the customer jobs research and organizes them into feasible form. This way your team can grasp more information about the market problems, find gaps and figure out if your solutions fit those needs. Additionally, once you understand your business objectives, you can also check if this value proposition is relevant to achieve your goals. Everything we've done up to this point is to make sure we are moving in the right direction. So once we are certain in our vision and product ideas, we can move forward to building MVP. And as with any development, it all starts with writing user stories. A user story is a standard framework to describe user actions. It may sound like, as a photographer, I want the image editing application to work offline, so that I can do my work on a plane. And there might be thousands of stories that declare different aspects of our application, forming the requirements for actual features. Here we can apply a technique called user story mapping. Story maps are normally created for the whole product, but may be applied to some part of our application. And this map is meant to show how those scattered stories are connected with each other. In simple words, we are trying to see a user journey within the app. So a basic user story map will include a few elements. First, write down the actual user stories you have at this stage. Second, define the themes that unite stories. For instance, a sign-up theme may include stories like Remember Me or Authorize with Google. Third, you can also group themes under epics, which describe even bigger phases of user actions. If we have such themes as sign-up and account configuration, we can set them under user onboarding epic. The fourth element is our user personas. The flow depends on which persona is trying to complete their jobs. Personas must identify which stories relate to which type of users and allow us to build the user journey for each specific persona. Fifth, we represent the release dimension. Basically, we want the map to show which stories we are prioritizing on the map for the next release. A user story map is a well-known technique for organizing user stories. But more importantly, now we can track how we implement the core jobs of our users in each of the releases. User story maps help you prioritize your product ideas in terms of development tasks. With this roster of tasks, you can plan MVP development and ship in your first version of the product to the market. But user story mapping concerns the tactical aspects of the planning. We also need to see the bigger picture and address our general strategy. To do that, we can use impact mapping. Any product is built to make an impact on the life of its users. 
and it's one of those things you have to articulate before your software hits release. Impact mapping is a method of visualizing your goals and features in regard to the impact they are going to make on your business and user goals. Once you have them on a canvas or a whiteboard, you can prioritize the most impactful stories and epics. What does a canvas look like? First is the why section, where you describe the business goals. Why should you make the impact and what will be the result? Say we want to develop a powerful photo editor that will capture 10% of the market in two years. The next section is who, where you name any actors involved that might either help or prevent you from achieving your goals. With our photo editor case, one of the user groups are those who need a powerful toolset, but don't open edited software so often. Then you define the how part. This is the actual impact. How are those groups going to contribute to the overall goal? Back to our example, some of current users are going to switch from Photoshop ready to pay a single license rather than a monthly subscription. And the final part of your impact map will be the what section. What can you do to make those impacts? This will be deliverables, your user stories and epics. Impact mapping is all about matching the business purpose of your product with the chosen features. Ok, here are my 6 techniques and practices for product discovery. As my final thought, it's important to understand that these techniques are meant to make your life easier. While jobs to be done approach advances you through the problem exploration and idea generation phases, Design Sprint helps validate and test those core ideas. Lean Canvas and Value Proposition Canvas help articulate why your business is building this product, how customers can benefit from it, and how those things work together. User Story and Impact Mapping let the team realize why an MVP looks like it does and why exactly these features were prioritized. They provide a reference for the desired impact on the market and the goals we want to achieve. And that's it for today. Hope you liked the video. Leave any questions below if something is unclear. In the next video in this series, my colleague will tell you about running customer research and interviews. Stay tuned!